John Bailey washed his best pants for his grandson's wedding the next day. But in the morning, the slacks were still damp, so he had to go another way. When his son came to take John to the church, Dan put his father in a wheelchair, then covered his legs with a blanket so that they would not be bare. Dan rolled his dad into the church and put the wheelchair in the handicapped pew. John was satisfied with the arrangement, and Dan was pleased too. The wedding went off without a hitch. In all, it was a lovely day. Luckily, John did not have to stand, or he would have given the game away. John enjoyed the reception so much, he forgot about his missing pants. At dinner, he had three drinks. And when the band played, he got up to dance. Thank you very much. Here in the frantic and rundown part of my life, I halt to see if I am catching up with my shadow. I yearn to tell about the pain of silence, to speak, but cannot form the words which howl like wolves. Surely I can wait long enough for the sound to catch up with my speedy travel through space. The fall of leaves strike me as momentous. They cover the sound of my own fall into darkness. I was here in a workaday world. I held myself together with sound. I turned a corner and found I was lost in a fog on a rocky cliff. Below is tied the tiny dinghy, which will be my test and trial. She rattles against the dark stones, oarless and rudderless for me to steer. It's a dream, it's a dream. I can wake and find the path home. Shame is banished and I am free of the odious task I cannot attain. Then I experience disintegration, not at an even pace, but in heartbeats. Most of the pieces will come back together again, but not in their original form or place. My nose may become my belly button. My legs may take the place of my ears. I know the rules of rebirth are written on parchment invisible to the pregnant eye. In the meantime, I ask to be a mouthpiece for the toad I saw eaten by a snake much too slowly. By now, the toad is snake, and snake is robust with toad. What seemed impossible has taken place. The woodland path, no longer their theater, is where I enter and perform my impossible feat. The wine in the golden goblet beckons us, but drink not yet, my friends. First, let me sing you a song, a song of sorrow, which shall ring laughingly in your soul. When sorrow comes, the gardens of the soul lie waste, Joy and song fade and die. Dark is life, is death. Innkeeper, your cellar is full of golden wine, and this loot, you have to imagine that, this loot I call mine. Yes, emptying the glass and sounding the loot are things that go well together. A full beaker of wine at the right time is worth more is worth more than all the riches of this world. Dark is life, is death. The firmament is endlessly blue and the earth will long remain. It will bloom forever in spring. But you, man, how long will you remain? Not even a hundred years do you have to enjoy all the rotten fruit of this earth. Look there, in the moonlight, a wild, ghostly figure crouches on the tombs. It's an ape. Listen how its howling cuts through to the sweet scent of life. Now drink the wine. Now is the time, my friends. Empty your golden beakers to the lees. Dark is life, is death. Thank you. Swans float on the water, moving gracefully with a current, their big feet turning and paddling. Oh, what hard work, below the surface, below the surface, down below, where only the turtles and fish can truly appreciate the stirrings of those big feet as they feast on plump and juicy water bugs. 
Leave us alone. Go somewhere else and paddle, protests the angry bugs as a largemouth bass speeds up its, its pursuit. A great blue heron stands at the pond's edge, quietly waiting, quietly waiting, waiting for an opportunity. She is also aware of the swans. To catch an unsuspecting baby bass is her goal. For in the distance, a large nest of hungry mouths desperately await her return. Like reeds springing up from the murky and lively waters, her legs remain still and strong, her toes clutching the ground, balancing gently. So, thank you. We in America are hungry for new things to consume, made of plastic and polyester and circuit boards, raw material heaved into factories to make new items for sale, advertised on television, shipped to stores, picked out by customers, paid for at the cash registers, brought to the cars by the shopping carts, driven home, lugged out of the car, taken out of shopping bags, wrapped up in pretty paper, unwrapped in place somewhere. Later, we find the need to clean up, and the stuff is tossed in the trash, picked up by the garbage truck, brought to the transfer station, set out in a barge, or kept in a landfill, out of sight for now. And this makes room for new stuff that starts the cycle all over again. Our hunger for consuming will haunt the landscape for a long time to come. This hunger, our legacy, we leave to future generations for interpretation. Because right now, this hunger is devouring our every minute. We cannot see clearly now, this hunger is overtaking us all. Sidewalks carry loneliness Living your life in the past Through the eyes of a child I know it won't last And it's a long, long way It's a long
Even though a snowstorm creeps up the coast, the trees are filling out. Even though metallic moves across the sky, robins peck the lawn. They know constancy means enduring. But now snow piles on the sill, inches up the windows and the blind and the birds have withdrawn gracefully. They know nothing remains the same. But there is fear in change and so I write of it. Knowing my cells are changing as I change these words. To rise and progress as a mountain rises, but the mountain stops as the sky continues to rise as if leaving. Sometimes we must withdraw into hiding for our renewal, to be part of our cellular universe as the tightrope walker withdraws a foot in order to balance. Before we progress along the wire, gravity can cause us to lose our center of mass. If we're not directly above our wire, if we rotate, we can fall. Like squirrels have long tails, we too need a balancing pole. This gives more time to move from the center back to the desired position. We too must listen to our bodies, its well of images. Events and actions differ as time changes. Duty demands leaders to withdraw gracefully without hesitation. Do they know the history of our race, their primal nature? Can they overcome themselves by governing their desires? Want the answer? No. <laughs> In my dreams. In my dreams, I fly in and out of windows, above mountains, between trees. I don't need wings to carry me. I fly because I am light and free in my dreams. In my dreams, I swim in deep blue waters. I jump off cliffs into the waiting ocean. I rise to the surface and keep on going up and up right up to the sky. I fly at night, the stars and the moon lighting my way. In my dreams, I am the leader of important causes. I speak truth to power. I bring healing to the hurt, food to the hungry, justice to the oppressed. In my dreams, I make a difference. What I do matters. I am making the world a better place. I will be remembered for what I have done in my dreams. In my waking life, I do laundry. I sweep, dust, and vacuum. I shop, I cook, I eat, I sleep. I drink lots of coffee and not quite enough wine. I take care of my mother. I babysit for my grandchildren. I go for walks with my husband. We watch TV, we read, sometimes I even write. In my waking life, I tend my garden, I watch the sunset, and I think, think great thoughts. And I long to be the person in my dreams. I long to do the things that matter, to make a difference, to know that in some way the world is better because I was here. In my dreams, there is no question about this. I am a person who can fly, and that is proof enough. 
But in my waking life, I measure my importance in small things. A word of gratitude from my mother. A smile when my grandson sees me at the door. My husband's warm embrace. This is my real life. The life that says, you are no different from anyone else. You cannot fly. You are earthbound. Tied to the earth by those you love. And sometimes, not very often, but oh, so gloriously, I feel myself rising to the sky on wings of joy. And oh yes, I am awake. And this is my real life too. the newspaper today tossed the magazines away tore the tv from the wall threw it out into the hall well it's not the words they say or the message they relate who i've had it with their chatter and the never-ending clatter Advertising victims The abuse of every system But never recognition For the best of our ambitions Or for you and me Oh, and you and I Living day to day On the riverside Missing Well, there's a blurb found on the last page After the latest rampage The psychopath, the mobster And the ruthless leader monsters And the landslides and the riptides And the murders on the west side They only view the garden In the autumn when it's dying But there's you and me When you and I story from this riverside yes there's you and I oh and you and me ordinary lives in the myth of history missing There's a lobster man in Booth Bay Children laughing on a June day Proud parents of a newborn It could be Bangladesh or Newport And the seasonal renewal Day breaking like a jewel It's the miracle of living Yes, the miracle of giving And there's you and me And it's you and I, oh, and you and me Ordinary lives in the myth of this story missing nations fighting it's easier to hear the words of someone who is shouting in the rivers full of blood that's the stuff of history while I noticed on these banks there lies true humanity and pessimism reigns cause the fools that report gain and they tell us daily bread with true as they claim and we chew their words and digest their lies then integrate their views into our very lives and we lose our faith in you and I and life up on this riverside 
Cause there's you and I Oh, and you and me Ordinary life is in the myth of history Missing have known about it, he would have smelled it. His neighborhood is rife with pens the slaves call prisons, the smell of bacon mingled with smoke, lye, and fills the air. Bacon bulks up the merchandise. Its grease applied externally gives luster to the skin and teeth. Five short blocks from his boarding house stands the showroom, surrounded with a 12-foot wall topped with broken glass. The windows are barred and the doors lock only from the outside. He would have walked by. He would have heard them. Every morning at 10, a new lot is brought from the pens to the yard behind the showroom. They are dressed in blue cotton suits and calico dresses, hair combed, faces washed. They are instructed to look lively, play the violin or dance if they know how. They line up by height, men along one wall, women along the other. He goes in. No one imagines he isn't a customer. The showroom accommodates a hundred slaves, has finished floors, a few chairs and three doors, one to the yard, one to the office, and one to the street. The merchandise stand on blocks are requ required to turn slowly, spread their arms, answer questions about their health, age, skills, appetite, previous owners. Customers may examine their teeth or pinch the skin on the back of their hands to determine age. Scars from whippings are considered signs of unruliness and decrease their value. He meets the eye of a man whose dignity has not been entirely snuffed out. When he leaves New Orleans, he takes a poster of a slave auction with him. Back in Brooklyn, he hangs the poster over his desk, spends the summer recruiting subscribers for a new paper, The Free Man. In his little day book, he writes, I am the poet of slaves and of the masters of slaves. I am the poet of the body and, and the grass begins to grow. Thank you. A change of seasons. Outside the window of my room, there is a change in the air. Gray clouds scud across the sky, bringing autumn along, nudging away the summer warmth Leaves from the oak tree hurriedly fall, chattering their way earthbound. The gardeners prune and lop the unruly branches, wood and sticks piled high for fires yet to come. Acorns drop and are scuffed underfoot, yet hidden for now. They will emerge tomorrow as more giant oaks for our children. Nature will hear the clarion call of life. Christmas trees puff out their verdant chests, ready for the holidays, some tall and slender, others squat, each bound for a home, laughter and good cheer. Fires will be lit, warming our souls and our bodies. We will enjoy the snow here in the snug confines of care. And no matter how cold, spring is always just around the corner. And pear, apricot, then there's me. 